Hello, and welcome once again, once again, <laughs> to Age of Wonders Planetfall. Uh, this is part two of that uh, eight-player free fall game. Um, we will talk about kind of some of the plays into the mid-game here um, and get into that second combat. Should be quicker um, than the last uh, than the last video, so uh, we'll go from there. Um, first thing to note is uh, completed Warmonger because of uh, that big fight. Um, which I should be popping relatively quick. Um, yeah, I'm already, I'm already doing it. Um, must have missed it in the transition here. Um, free 200 morale in PvP fights is just really, really good. Um, it used to be 400, and that was just stupid broken. But, uh, I have the empty doctrine slots with nothing to do, so, uh, nothing that I want to put in there. So, it's a no-brainer to take that. Um, in the meantime, um... I do some produce energy just because my energy is so low. I have no buildings I really want to build, so I'll take the energy. Losing another scout or two here to attrition. I hope I remember to build a couple more here um, just to always have a few of them out. Um, I'm also getting some cities popping for growth here, so we'll deci we're deciding on the optimal stuff here. I do want this luxury grasslands. Just for the movement ability stuff, uh, I've been teching into uh, the internal empire movement for quite a while here, so uh, I knew I was going to want that one. It was just a case of would I rather have a C exploitation in my capital or not. And since my capital is such good production, I figured I would double down, um, take the first one, um, take the first exploitation. I don't remember what I actually put in there, though, but uh, I didn't think I needed the um, other research one. I pop a scout on this site just to deny its income, because um, it is a 10 food, 10 production, so that's worth doing. Um, take deploy monitor, probably should have had one of those up for a long time ago, but uh, it's always nice to get a value one. And we just continue, now that I have a scout in the middle of, of the f woods, or in the middle of the world here, that I can just be doing first, I'm doing that. At, right at this point, people start freaking out of, you know, who's... Who's terraforming? Why are you terraforming? Um, I'm, I've been pretty quiet about it, but uh, I've been consistently and constantly just terraforming every turn here. And just now people in this other continent are learning about that because they uh, didn't have vision before to see me do it. Um, again, same thing. I, I'm camping that Cosmite node um, to deny its income. I'm still not 100% sure um, how this is going to pan out. Like I had said in the previous video, uh, Ninju ultimately will vassalize to me, but uh, that wasn't a 100% for sure thing yet because that hadn't gone through. So in the meantime, I will camp his stuff and uh, minimize the chance that he can do anything effective against me. But that fight was pretty crippling. He lost a lot of stuff in that fight, and right now he, I can see he's got a couple units, but he can't hardly have more than two or three at this point. Um... And uh, he just doesn't have anything that can stop my, my push if I push into him. Uh, let's skip ahead through some of this other player's turn while we're waiting on them to do stuff. Um, okay, so we go back in here. Uh, I can produce some hydro exploitations, uh, so I do so. Uh, right now I'm talking with Ninju about... Uh, exactly what it is I'm going to want from him in any peace deal. Uh, he ends up, I think he messes up the peace deal, so we do it in two stages, but I negotiate that I want that forward sector that he built, plus I want this Amazon city, and uh, I want a uh, five Cosmite per turn, plus the vassalization itself, which will give me some energy per turn. Um, again, he just, he wanted to keep playing in the game. I've the way I'm role-playing here, I've got no incentive to actually kill him. Um, this is the other Amazon lady who we have a defensive pact with. Um, she was going to be sending some stuff to me, which I didn't even know about. I didn't know it was on the way. But uh, <coughs> now she's uh, letting me know that troops are coming after the big fight <laughs> when I don't need them anymore. But uh, the thought was nice. I I appreciated that. So I... Uh, I successfully defended my my Amazon, my fellow Amazons. Um, I move in position, move into position to be able to take that if I have to. Like I said, I end up not needing it. I still have some of these other reinforcements coming along. I'm building a couple more units again as a just in case sort of thing. 
Um, this is when Ninja says he literally cannot send me that stuff because his leader's recuperating. So I give him that, that tone to do it. Um, in the meantime, again, just spamming force because I can. Um, and nothing else too important, just hitting end tone. Uh, I'm not sure what these are. Uh, I find out ultimately that at least one of them is a scout. Um, I wasn't sure if that was more ninja. Yeah, I found it right now. Um, I wasn't sure if this was ninja stuff or not, but uh, no, just third party people uh, peeping in on all this. Uh, now, after this point, I make the decision that both because there hasn't been a lot of war going on in this game and because in the spirit of my uh, my uh, roleplay here, that Amazon colony that I bought um, and then had to sell off right away, they really would prefer to be under my control. So my next step here after kind of rolling through um, my, my friend's land here um, and, and bouncing the Shikaron is I'm going to move through them head towards this colony right here um, and recapture it basically through either diplomacy, like forceful diplomacy or extremely forceful diplomacy um, as best I can. I finally get regenerative bioresonance uh, which gives me the regen mod and an operation the, that I don't think is very good. It's the um, pylon for healing but uh, I do some considerations of if anything wants the regen. Ultimately, I don't put it on anything because the Huntresses just don't have enough HP for it to be a wise um, value. Uh, I decline that because I'm not going to fight in the water. Um, Huntresses don't have enough HP for it to be value. My Lancers are modded up good enough. My Heroes are modded up good enough. I'm bringing along a lot of Biomancers to all these fights, so uh, it's just not worth it. Um, again, this is the... Uh, Vassalization offer, like I said, he had forgot. He gave me some energy just because, but he'd forgotten to uh, include the the cities. But um, I get that back. Oh, he he will end up giving that to me in a hot second here. Sending some scouts forward ahead of the avenue I plan to advance in, which is just good practice um, if you have the scouts available. It's nice to know what you're possibly walking into. Um, in the meantime, I'm kind of transitioning out of emergency construction mode. Um, yep, this is where I'm like, oh, I should be building a couple more scouts because always be scouting. Don't really need the production anymore because uh, I've pretty well secured my, my home front so I can start going towards I've way more tech income at this point you can tell I went from fifty to fifty before this fight to hundred and fifty now. Um I think it was even lower than fifty for a while there. Um and uh way bigger energy income as well so again housekeeping here where not sure exactly what I want this to, to be going for but in the meantime it can do some some growth and um, stuff. <coughs> um, okay, I just build another scout and keep some, some of those going out. In the meantime, let's just fast forward through here. There's not, oh, what was that? What was that, uh? Offer. I don't know what that was. Oh, right. All these popped up individually, so I just had to clear through all of them. Um, and pushing my forces forward. Um, like I said, I've got a lot of good vision here. Um, <laughs> continuing to spam forests everywhere. I, I double checking that I can't do it. At, well, I, if I can do it in my in my vassal's lands, and it turns out I can. Um, he asked me not to do that, so I don't yet. I maybe in the second session I'll do it over his objections, but uh, for right now, I I deem it okay. I've got other places to put forest for now. Uh, 
uh, checking on the mic to see who's number one, who's number two. Um, I'm number two right now, uh, which actually surprised me. I would have thought I'd be lower than that, but uh, it's been a pretty peaceful game overall. A lot of people must feel pretty comfortable with what they have. Um, I have a lot of tier one units, although I've got a pretty decent amount of Cosmite invested, and uh, I've got some pretty good levels. I don't know if levels are included in that calculation or not. This is when I decide that I have never for once built a naval unit in any sort of serious capacity in a game. And if there's ever a time that that might work out, this would be the game. With the continents map, eight players, um, I may want to have some forces kind of closer to home, clearing a couple sites out, and then um, be able to respond to people coming across the water. So um, I start looking into that double check my mods while I'm at it I start double checking my tech paths um, on the society tree here I know I want more operations to be able to s the op points to spam operations I would like eventually to get some of those doctrines but uh, I just don't know when I'm gonna get the time uh, so for right now I think I just leave it out oh no I will eventually get for that but uh, that's way out. That's like 20, 30 turns down the line, so low priority stuff. <coughs> Waiting on other players for something. Let's just keep skipping ahead here. Through the end of the turn. Oh, this might be the, uh, this probably is the bio break. That's why. Nothing's going on here. We are, we're paused, and it doesn't. It just isn't saying that. Um, the so uh, my my vassal here had been at war with the uh, the Therians, and they took it from they took this uh, site from him. And he's like, "Hey, can you can you help me out with that?" And I'm like, "Well, no, I can't, because I'm not at war with them, <laughs> and I'm checking if I can give him any units or give him anything to help, and I just can't. So uh, you'll have to deal with that, even though he's." Pretty low on units or whatever right now, but uh, oh well. It's a problem for another day. I think I gave him some energy there just to be like, hey, I can't give you units, but I can give you like 10 energy. This is why you scout ahead, because now I get a chance to see if, oh look, the city I'm planning on pushing into, there are some units here, so I, I need to be a little aware. Um, I also take the opportunity to put detector mods on a couple of my um, scouts, because I'm heading towards Syndicate land, and uh, Syndicate, you want detection when you do that, so don't want to get too surprised. On my no Wiggler army, actually, it's not a problem because I have that on it. The detectors on everything anyways, but uh, ironically, not on my scouts. Um, so yeah, this is now when I actually pull the trigger and say, Hydromancer, sure, why not? Let's put Regen on them. Let's put... Uh, I think I pick Guardian Damon Shell. I don't think I do. I don't think I theme out him. I think I two mod him with just the um, regen and uh, one of the the value synthesis or yeah synthesis mods here. Unless I do primal will. Nah, no, I just do the two. <coughs> um. The other Amazon's full ally me now, so uh, we have a pretty good little power block in this this part of the world here. Um, I feel pretty comfortable right now as far as uh, where I sit. I don't feel like I'm at much risk at home, um, although I do have... I've got one of these stacks that I think it's a four or five Huntresses plus a Biomancer that I'm like, yeah, I'll just leave that at home. I don't need more units too much. Um, to be pushing out with because that's just not fitting into my, my plan for this game. So um, here I'm just checking I have an expansion, which one of these two I want to do. Um, they're nominally identical, but I take the one that's a little more protected as opposed to the more slightly more aggressive. Probably doesn't matter either way. And again, continuing to put forests everywhere I can. And let's just move forward. Um, again, recapping some of these fights, recapping a bunch of all, clearing a bunch of things. Um, some of the other players are starting to ally now too. 
um, on these other continents. <coughs> this is where I'm trying to decide if I want to put regen on this Lancer or not. I think ultimately I just go, it's not worth thinking about. Well, I run out of time and then I go on to something else, I think. <laughs> this surprised the hell out of me. I don't know where on earth that stat came from. Because <laughs> there's no Marauders anywhere. It must be, maybe it's that Water Spawner? I don't know, but I was like, what the hell? Where did this even come from? Um, but I have a couple units that are around enough to be able to do it. Plus this this turn I just got auxiliary force, so um, I've got the super quick movement in my internal lands. Um, it won't take very long for me to, to build a couple units and clear out that one Harrier. If I'm super lucky, um, this I pass on. I don't need the one free to texture mod. That's just a really not great hero. I'm under no pressure, so I just say, yep, I will reject this one, get something that has a better poke, maybe. Um... and move on. Uh, again, we do some scouting. This this uh this guy cleared some stuff. So, my Shikaon Vassal here, he's he's still bored. He wants to keep fighting. So, uh with his last little scrap of units here, he rolls up and he says he'll fight with me um on the attack. He actually ends up declaring war before I do. Um, cuz he's just he wants to have some some fights going on in here. <coughs> I noticed this, and I'm like, yeah, I've got the scout here. I'll send that up. Um, that will actually turn out to be um, another uh, syndicate stack heading north. So uh, very good. Some of these, like if, at the time, it feels lucky, but I get consistently lucky enough with stuff like that that uh, it really isn't luck. It's uh, just knowing that scouts are nice to have, and if your scout's not out there, you can't get lucky in what you see. So always have a scout or two out as best you can. Um, and again, like just these last couple turns, I built a couple more scouts just for that exact reason of it's nice to be able to keep an eye out on everything going on so that you're surprised as little as possible. <laughs> um, yeah, let's keep skipping past here through the end of this turn. I don't know what... Oh, um... This is me letting that other uh, Amazon ally know that uh, I'm going to be doing some aggressive posturing very quickly here. Because now that we're fully allied, she deserves to, to know. Uh, I let um, Inju, my, my vassal here, know uh, out, out of game um, in a Discord chat. So... Hitting the end of tone here, let's just again skip ahead a little bit. Um, I'm continuing to build up just a couple valley units to defend the home front. Um, Therians are demanding stuff from me because uh, I don't remember why. There must be some reason they're mad at me. But 115 energy is pretty easy for me to give up right now. I'm just checking visibility here. I always forget exactly how far he can see out. Um, I'm not too worried if he sees the red axes, but I don't really want him to be paying attention and see that it's me specifically that's pushing up on him. So I'd like to stop just outside of range and then kind of give him my ultimatum here. <laughs> and we continue to spam forests <laughs> everywhere. Um, yep, this is where my, my vassal uh, declares war, because he wants to attack this stack in the water where he has an advantage. Um, he gives uh, the synthes the syndicate player the opportunity to retreat, and he takes it. Um, technically, didn't have to by the rules of this FFA, but uh, it's good practice. It's a nice thing to do. Plus, he knows that I've got plenty of stuff coming in here um, to be able to assist, so... Uh, 
Um, I did decide that that scout can probably be better served than the other side, so I don't need three scouts all on the side of the water. Again, like I said, I I caught this stack moving up north, so I can kind of check and see what's coming. I'm not too afraid of it. Um, there's not too much there that's uh, of a problem to me. It'd be nice to pick that off maybe because there's a hero in it, but uh, it won't get up to that city in time to stop me doing whatever I want. I decline to take this 2v2 fight because I'm building another Hydromancer and I don't really need that extra little bit of Cosmite right now. Um, so we just leave it off. I figure that uh, that's a really good spot for that Shrike um, to be able to keep an eye out and, and observe that stack moving north. Um, in the meantime... With this strike, I think I try to move it south or off or something because I don't. Wa I'm not going to want it in the fight. I don't really need the extra vision too much around here, so um, it's kind of it's nice to have it in the general area, but it doesn't need to be right there. Um, still building the odd hunches here and there just because I've got nothing better to build, and um, if someone does try to come to me to attack me. I'll be really glad that I've got these extra units lying around. Um, while I'm at it, I'm doing a quick pass to to see what's all got uh, militia or not. Um, this is my vassal allying with my ally. And uh, we hit enter. Oh, no, we don't hit enter. And I demand that city. Um, <laughs> and then I hit enter. Uh, this is me trying to be like, hey, I can't, I can't stop my vassal from declaring on you when he's already done it, but, uh, I still need, I, I want that colony, um, which is all, that's, the way I'm role-playing is all I want is this one colony. Now, it may end up that I take another city, but that'll be a decision for, uh, a different, uh, for the, the next session, but, uh. My my goal in this fight is pretty limited to just getting that one Amazon colony back under my control. Second world event comes in, um, and I get kind of lucky again. Uh, the mountainous sector terraform is really annoying to me because uh, I can't terraform first on mountainous sectors, but the tactical combat one is actually okay for me. Um, I've got st I, I actually debate putting the stake resist mod and everything. I just take this hero because um, I don't think I'm going to get a much, much better one. There's two Amazon players on the map. And uh, it at least had a guaranteed advantage. It's got, I don't think it's scan. It's got heal maybe? I don't remember. Anyways, um, I took that hero. Um, what was my point? Right, the the world event. Um, this earthquake one. The stagger, I've got stagger resist. I actually debate putting stagger resist on everything. I think I don't. I think I decided I'd rather not spend the cosmite again. Just whatever. If a huntress only gets two actions instead of three, that's not a big deal. But the bigger one is it destroys... Um, destroys ground hazards and stuff, um, which for me is very solid because I'm planning on doing a city attack here, so if the walls come down, that's just to my benefit. Um, so I stage up a little bit here. Um, I can, again, try to keep an eye on that stack coming up from the south. Um, ultimately, I don't know remember if I attack this turn or next turn. Right now I'm debating on it, if I want to try to attack or not, and then the, ultimately what happens is this scout I send forward and I see reinforcements coming up. I don't want to give him the extra turn to get more units, but um, it might be this turn. Yeah, I've got this extra stack coming up. 
so there's going to be a ton of my units rolling in pretty soon here. I've got my ally. He doesn't have the movement, so it must be next turn. <coughs> um, Syndicate player still hasn't moved that stack up, although I realize, hold on, I've got this monitor I can use. This is just a really good place, period. No one's going to come here really to see it too much if they don't have a detector mod. I'd really just like to keep an eye out in this general area to watch anything moving up through the water here. Um, and then it lets you move the scout up to somewhere more useful. Oh, it's actually this scout from the other side. Now is when I look and I'm like, hey, hold on. There's some units moving up a full stack here that I don't want to tangle with. Maybe it'd be better off if I just attack now. Yep, here comes the War Declaration, which doesn't tank my um, popular support because I still have, for another 2-3 turns, um, the bonus from the War Declared on me, which doesn't go away when that war ends. Um, I'm willing to do this fight um, as is, but my, ally, or my vassal here does have enough movement um, to assist me, so he does end up popping in. I'm not sure what I'm waiting on here. There must be some discussion or something going on that, in the meantime, I'm just continuing <laughs> to terraform. Oh, no, I don't do it this turn. I do it the next one. And this is actually... Okay, so this did happen. I missed this the first go-round because I, I do this attack very early in this next round. The... um. Therians here send a stack that ends up stopping directly next to the city, and I'm not at war with them, but my vassal is. And so when we attack, this Therian stack also gets dragged in, um, which I had not been expecting. I had assumed that this would not be a close fight at all, um, and it ends up having a whole nother four unit. So it's six and six and four, um, six, twelve. 16, 18 units versus 18 units. So it's actually even, plus he's got uh, plus he's got the turrets. Now, a lot of his stuff is militia, plus the Therians he doesn't have control over. I, we've got, on my end of the fight, we've got two, um, two players with ops versus just one on his side. So this is definitely still in my advantage. It's, it's a, a fight I'm expected to win. But uh, it would have been a lot more comfortable if he just didn't have those extra four units. Um, wouldn't have lost as much, but anyways, uh, there's some confusion from, uh, the, from Winslayer, um, the, uh, syndicate player here of why he can't move those units. It takes a hot second for all of us to realize, well, wait, no, that's because those aren't your units. <laughs> um, it's the NPC faction units that, uh, were brought in, um, because one of the players involved is at war with them. And, again, just kind of doing an eyeball check from my view here of, okay, what's what do we got around? How many heroes? What units? There's a sharpshooter. That's kind of cool. Um, Prowler and stuff. Um, Windslayer just kind of moves some couple of his units up a little bit. Jockeys for position. Hits massive defense bypass, you know, just kind of basic prepping for the onslaught, um, which is correct. Um, he outranges both of the opponent factions here. Um, I think other than heroes, the infantry is the longest range thing on the attacker side, so um, he has no incentive to come out to us. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, this is actually pretty good militia defense as well. I think this is militia two, um, not militia one. Yeah, it's militia two because it's the double elbowing and sentinels, which is a solid militia. I think that's that's pretty good. Um, sentinels are a very strong unit. Uh, pops manipulate shield. That I would not have done. Um, there's just no ju there's no need for it right now. Um, why are you using that this early in the fight? Um, yes, it's like basically a free cooldown ability, but I would save it for units I know are going to be at risk. And neither one of those units are necessarily going to be at risk yet. I don't know how tanky that hero is, though. But, uh, I, yeah, I would have waited for the manipulate shields, I think. Um, he's using the enforcers for their shield defense mode, which that's fine. Um, you're not doing anything else with those guys right now anyway, so might as well. Um, he is, so one thing he's doing here is he very clearly realizes that Ninja's on one side of the fight here. He's a lot more scared of my stuff than Ninja stuff, which he probably should be, um, because, uh, Ninja, uh, if he can clear Ninju, that removes all the ops from his from his contribution. Plus, uh, the Therians are on this side, so he already is a little overloaded here. Plus, um, there's only the the Shikaran stack that we brought along is just a little weaker. It's it's a couple of raiders that are modded, but uh, I've got better support stuff. So um, it's smart that he's kind of shifting off to the the left flank. Well, his right flank, my left flank here. Um, to try to go after my ally and, and support his ally. Now, he can't really control how the Therians are going to fight, which is really going to kind of screw him there. Um, now it's up to me. I've got fewer units, so it's a shorter turn timer. I only got three and a half instead of five. I'm just kind of checking some lines of sight here. I want to get a scan off, um, but I also want to kind of decide what to scan. I, I'm going to have two or three that I might be able to get off right away here. Um, I think I have three biomasses in this fight. Maybe it's just two. So I, I want to get them in a position where they probably won't be shot by the turrets, but they can get some value scans out. I'm looking at this and I'm like, you know, one tile closer and I can get the turrets, and then the other one can get, uh, I think the triple hunches or something is what I go for. Um, those bounces also look pretty attractive to scan. So yeah, I, I, I go for the bounces with that one, and then with this one, I between the Huntresses and the turrets, and ultimately I go with the turrets because uh, that will help my ally um, as well as me, which is one of the reasons why um, Amazons are awesome to have in a, in a team fight like this because uh, scan helps everybody, not just you. So it's just very strong. Um... Trying to aggressively position here. I, I'm debating if I want to do a war, early war cry. I decline just because I don't think I'm going to have... I, I I don't think I need the damage this next turn. Um, and this side of the flank, he's kind of already giving up a little bit. So I'm going to have the free action eventually to war cry. Um, I, I'll probably get better value out of it, out of it if I just wait. Um... Leave that uh, Huntress exactly out of range of the turret. It'll be out of the fight for a while, but I don't think I need it. Um, I, I just want to kind of get that pushing up towards the center. In the middle here, uh, just running into the cover. Again, I'm, I'm stacking up for any AoE ops or anything that might be coming down, but I am more concerned um, with uh, not being able to get into range quickly. I won't only want to observe one round of hits from the turrets, and um, <coughs> I don't know if I know what Windslayer's uh, secret tech is, but I just I'm not super concerned with AOE ops out of him, um, and I don't remember why it wasn't. Oh, he's Celestian, right? So, yeah, there's not. Maybe if he has went deep into weapons trees or something, but I haven't seen anything like that from his modding loadouts. So I'm just not really concerned about big AoE ops um, dropping from him. So I'm willing to be a little more clumped up in order to be more aggressive next turn with my um, 
with my moves. Um, <clears throat> and I'd rather have all my units closer together so they can support each other as opposed to trying to shift and to take some of this cover in between us and stuff. It's just, yeah. Um, right down the middle so I can overload on, the, on my flank um, and then push over to help um, help the Shikao and Ninju on this other side. Uh, Ninju, again, he's a very good tactical player. Um, he's also playing very aggressive. Uh, he knows that's kind of how I would play. And with the Shikao, you have to. Um, so he's moving up. He's he's trying to pick off a couple units, um, stun some stuff, soft lock it. Uh, what does he grab here? He grabs the Harrier, which I questioned a bit at the time, but... He doesn't have a lot of other great targets. It would have been nice to get the Biomancer, but I've already scanned the good targets. And in the meantime, he said he wanted um, he wanted a melee option, plus the flyer is not terribly bad. Um, it means that this Enforcer can't get at him. Um, and with the... Um, uh, I'm blanking on the name for some reason right now. Um, when you copy a unit, you when you die, you get the Wistro health anyways. So I can understand why he would rather just have any unit now as opposed to having to wait another turn before he can copy something. Um, so yeah, he took his, his couple pot shots and then he just kind of stages up um, in preparation for a better push next turn um, p behind that... Uh, that Harrier he just copied, and probably when a couple more units get pushed up here. Um, Turrets start taking pot shots. I had intentionally put this high evasion hero forward um, where I expected it to, to miss a lot of shots. I didn't think this line of sight would be able to hit me there. Um, apparently it can, just barely. Um, Ah, it's super counterintuitive with the way that the stuff's animated. And again, you can tell I'm I'm checking it here, but uh, it's not a big deal. Um, that turret's gonna take way more damage on the counter shot than it did to my ha hacker. But uh, I was a little grumpy about that. Of I thought I'd put it in a in a position where it wouldn't take that shot. <clears throat> this I don't know why. Uh, I might have missed it if it got staggered from the Earthquake here. I don't know why he pushed up with that Guild Assassin so aggressively. I think I would have kept that back. I mean, it's a sniper. Let it let it snipe. Don't don't put it somewhere where it's um at high risk if you can avoid it. <coughs> Maybe it did get staggered, so he's moving it up for a seven range shot. I don't know. Or Overwatch. Then he stages he stages his hero back, which I guess is okay. Um, yeah, he he must have. Oh no, that's just not regular hero that he moved back. Yeah, I I, I wasn't able to check. Well, I'm not able to check right now on exactly what all got staggered and why. But uh, I'm assuming the reason that he's doing some of these moves is because he he only had the snapshots available and not the full action sniper shots, but I would still would have played more conservative with those units. Um, you want your snipers to be the last thing on the field to die as much as possible. Again, um, just in general, playing a little passive for what I would do. Um, like, with these bouncers, I mean, maybe, I guess we're a little out of range for, for being able to get a nice good counter shot. But if you were going to do that, then why are you bouncing up? Why are you pushing those bouncers out to just kind of be a sacrifice? Um, yeah, I don't know. I I would e I think I would stage a couple more units way back up on this hill if I was going to be playing back, or I'd be really pushing forward um, as much as possible. Right now, it's kind of a worst of both worlds, um, where he's got a couple units straggling out that are going to be in in perfect um, in a perfect area to be kind of picked off one at a time, and then the major chunk of his stuff won't really be able to respond at full effectiveness because they're going to have to waste a couple actions to get into proper range. Um, now, does he push those bounces out? 
Okay, that. Okay, never. Mind. That's a little better. Yeah, that's. I can see that. Um, bounces are so maneuverable though that I don't know if I would have shoved them out like that. I guess they're super evasive. Um, and so if you're taking shots at them, you're not taking shots at other stuff. This hunches play, I don't think I would have done though. He got a couple stegers off with it, but both of those units are single action attacks anyways. So he's not really gaining much un unless he fully staggers them and removes all their actions. <coughs> um, still haven't seen what he's going to do on this flank. Again, he's pretty much abandoned it. He's brought a whole bunch of stuff way to that one side to overload. And yeah, looking here too, he's got he's got those sentinels in the very back. Those should be further forward to take fire, I think. Because they're so yeah, he's he overwatched that one way in the back where North Nexon gonna be pushing up on it anyways. If he moves up forward with that, at least it's gonna suck up some damage that will keep his real damage his his real killers alive. Um for the back. Um, by this point, I'm starting to plan a little bit on what I think I'm going to try to do. Uh, independence move don't really help. That Harrier move doesn't do too much. Although, did he kill the unit there? No, he just damaged it. Okay. Um, so not too, too much. I think that shove shooter killed the unit or something. Um, yeah, I just two-shot that with that hacker. Um, it, w it was going to die either way, most likely, but uh, criticals, Amazon's morale matters, man. Um, I'm trying to decide how aggressive to play with my uh, my lances here. If I want to take pot shots or red move, um, ultimately I go with pot shots. I could like red move and really aggressively um, go to try to um, lock stuff down, but there's just not a lot on this side that's going to be shooting back at me. So I want to take out the turrets as the easy thing to to do, and then. Again, push up here with the really annoying evasive unit. Um, oh, and I still do have the actions here. So I still, yeah, if I remember what I do now with this guy, um, push up to red move melee overwatch that uh, Huntress. So, yeah, I just had enough units here that I could get the best of both worlds. I'm debating healing that hacker, but I take a second look here and I'm like, hold on, um, there's nothing there that can really kill that. <laughs> Nothing I'm worried about. So now I ask my ally, hey, is there anything you want me to do? Um, actually, no, that's that's later. For now, I'm just like, hold on, I can actually use the mind control usefully again, because <laughs> there's that random Harrier in that uh, NPC stack, so get a ton of value out of that. I kill a T2 unit and gain a T2 unit with one operation. So I was pretty, pretty happy there. Um, continue to have some of these value sleeps uh, just to remove actions. Um, taking, again, a, a value blind. Uh, I stay, don't really stay good too much. Um, two, two of those three targets, are I think they're all stay resistant. I was just looking to blind, um, and uh, I figured I was going to get a little more value out of the blinding arrow than a single action pot shot. Um, nothing to do with him, so just defense mode, the biomancer in the back. With this Huntress, I'm trying to decide, it's going to probably, well, I just skip it, but eventually with that guy, I have to decide if I'm going to leave him in the open or, or not. Uh, I think I play the more aggressive approach of push him forward, and it's okay if he's in the open. This Huntress too, I'm like, I can red move into cover, I can take a pot shot, or I can just sit tight. I end up sitting tight. Um, I don't want to, there's limited units on the side, and there's no reason for me to uh, give an opportunity for um, some kind of uh, counterattack there. So uh, that's the other thing. I don't know. Did he? Did did the opponent here not scan anything with his biomancer? He didn't scan my huntresses. He didn't scan the raiders. If he if he did scan something, it was maybe this hero. But uh, by 
in that tone in the middle, he had the range. He definitely should have scanned one of the either the Huntresses or the Raiders um, for that high value. This is Ninja forgetting that Sly happens, <laughs> forgetting how Therians work when they take damage. So these big giant AOE buffs are going to go off. Um, although some of that is you're going to have to do it anyways. Don't really have a choice. <laughs> yeah, this this positioning on the sharpshooter is horrendous by the AI. You, there's no reason for that sniper to be sitting there. That's just awful. Um, now I'm kind of just checking some damage to see what, what may or may not die. Um, this uh, this is kind of where that transforming into Harry is paying off a little bit, that uh, he can have melee attacks on evasive units. Of course, again, forgetting how they work, he pops the extra evasion before he goes in with the melee attack or after the melee attack oh correction he pops the higher evasion with the melee attack and he really should have done it with the uh, a range attack um but uh still with his his hero he's got this double double shot um action so he's able to pop pop um remove some stuff really really easily take another value shot um it's done really well with his uh limited set of units here um he's definitely been trading way out of his way class <coughs> um killing more units than than he's going to lose here <coughs> like i said though ninja is a very strong tactical player doesn't quite get the finisher there with the firestone projectile which he must have actually just tacked now this turn, I think. Or maybe I, f yeah, maybe I messed it up in the last video. Maybe he did have that, and he just had been using it in the early, early game. I don't remember. Um, just not paying attention to it, but yeah, he goes for the concussion instead of the finish. Uh, which I think is probably correct. I would normally would say kill whatever you can kill, but that's an AI-controlled unit. It's a sniper unit that's only got a single action left. Um, and it's going to die anyways. So I think getting the, the potential double concuss off and staggering that guild assassin behind it is probably higher value than going for the finisher kill. But that's a rare case. Normally you would just take the guaranteed cleanup shot. Yeah, this is me looking being like, yeah, it's looking pretty bleak there. There's not too much he can do against those two units, and I've got a whole other stuff, group of stuff coming. Um. <laughs> Suddenly, bio launcher, um, which actually is, again, it's not super painful as far as the action loss doesn't matter too much to uh to my ally and injury there because. His de his heroes in the back are single action damage dealers. They don't need full actions. Um, checking on the mods here, a little bit of accuracy and stuff. It's interesting setup. Um, probably the best he's was would be able to manage. Um, the flanker is really nice on those units. I think. Um, the bi oh back to that bio launcher attack. The big downside here is it's going to kill this raider because um, of the actual little bit of damage it did. So ninja's going to lose another unit. Which yeah, this this fight worked out well for me pretty good. My ally took all the all the damage and I took all the spoils. <laughs> um again I think if by this point it's pretty obvious who's going to win. It's just a question of what the losses will be in the meantime. Um a double flanking attack like that, that's pretty solid, although I've got my hair and my control here to be able to finish some stuff off and um yeah, that 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 bunny isn't long for this world. Took a manipulate sleep on the back, <coughs> or on that back raider there, which, yeah, that's the best you're going to be able to manage. Again, I don't know what he scanned, but I think the, the scan, whatever he did, or if he didn't, that's a misplay. Um, if he just scanned those raiders, they would have gone down way quicker, which maybe would have been the better play. I mean, he could have done the Huntresses as well for just more overall units, but... Uh, he was going to have trouble trying to kill a lot of those Huntresses anyways because of the way that he had to approach this fight and, and go after my ally first. 
So yeah, I think I would have scanned the Raiders and then tried to finish finish off Ninju as best as possible. Um, gets the Entangle here, which is annoying but not awful. I'm still going to be able to kill, like, deal a bunch of damage with those units this turn, so I wasn't too mad about it. I can cleanse it if I need to with some Biomancers, but those are the um, Huntresses that are already in a decent position. Like, they don't need to move too, too much to get value out of them, so I wasn't really grumpy about that. <coughs> Now this is another one when he did it at the time. I'm like, why are you? He. I don't think you go for the side tech shield there. I think you need to have your enforcer start to deal damage. Like the plus two shield is just not gonna make a huge difference anymore. So just take your, take your punches on that um, uh, infiltrator. That's the name of it. Take the punches on the infiltrator. Finish that off. Um, while you can. Um, again, he took a couple value shots here on stuff that uh, spread out some damage. It just wasn't going to really do much. But I don't know what he would have been able to shoot that would have done. That would have helped him out a lot. Um, you've got evasive unit, evasive unit, tanky unit, tanky unit, evasive unit in defense mode, evasive unit in defense mode. Like, there's just nothing there that he can get value out of. So maybe he should have just kept retreating from this side and push towards the side he can do something about. Now that blind is a pretty good move. Um, yes, he took a huge chunk of damage, but he wasn't going to get much out of it anyways. I don't know if I had a shot with the um, Fnatic either. The problem is that unit is just it's such pathetic damage in the first place that even if he can get away with it, what good does that do, do him? Um, just checking on some melee attack stuff here. I'd asked if he needed help um, with that bunny, if I think, um, which is why I skipped out on hitting the bunny and, and went to push forward instead. Um, able to take up some cleanup shots with the units in the back. Uh, again, at, at this point, um, the everything is, the conclusion here is foregone. It's just how much pain is there going to be taken on the way. <coughs> Evasive units suck against melee. So, yeah, this uh, fanatic is going to get turbo stomped pretty hard. Um, taking some kind of half moves, preparatory moves here, um, just to see how I might want to finish stuff out. Go for the blinding shot instead of the chip damage, because I've got enough damage that at least one of these units is dying. I'm not sure if I can finish off that Sentinel or not, but, um, yeah, that, that helps. <laughs> that, that double crit, um, is what changed it there, so it probably was a little bit of a waste to take that blinding arrow. I should have taken the chip shot, but, um, oh well. Checking, uh, so as I'm going through, the reason I'm moving is to see this, the expected um, two hit chances as it goes from red to green to yellow, whatever, just to kind of try to gauge if I'm going to go for a single shot at better accuracy or a double shot at worse accuracy. Um, get that lucky crit to clean up with a relatively low percentage shot. Um, continue to get more crits. Again, morale is so powerful here. Um, wake up that unit, because I expect to be able to kill it. I don't actually remember. I might... Yeah, I get a double miss, dou double graze. But I can clean it up with uh, this Huntress on the other side here. And that's my turn. Um, I check if my ally wants an operation at all. No, I don't. I don't remember. It's either this turn or next turn. I think I'm asking him if he wants a heal. Because I don't need it. Um, I don't know if that hero is going to die or not if I don't give it to him. And uh, he ends up saying he doesn't want it. So, And yeah, that Infiltrator lives another turn. 
um, instead of just being dead. So, yeah, I, I definitely, I think, would have punched it instead of getting the defense mode off with that enforcer. These raiders are going to do some work here. So it takes the value shot with the um, infiltrator and observes a melee overwatch for his trouble. I don't, I mean, it's going to die anyways. I maybe would have just slammed it into defense mode and let it be. Um, but I can understand why he would want to get that little bit of damage out of it first. I just wouldn't want to give value to anybody that was in melee overwatch if I didn't have to force him to use the actions later. <laughs> um, Earthquake goes off. Stagger's almost everything on the field. Um, if not everything on the field. Pretty close to it. Um, and destroys a bunch of uh, city walls and stuff. Which at this point is a little too late to matter. Certainly doesn't hurt me as the attacker here, but uh, made no difference really. <coughs> so we continue to wait to see what uh, Windslayer does here. Um, it looks like all the AI units are dead, I think. Yeah, so it's just actual real player units right now. <coughs> uh, finally gets a shot off with that sniper. And boy oh boy <laughs> is it the right one. Uh, lands a, a full crit shot um, onto the hero. So yeah. I had asked if he wanted healed, and the answer was no. Um, it probably wouldn't have mattered. I think that crit meant it was dead either way, because 15 more damage, although it's a couple armor. It might have lived through this turn if it had, had that extra little bit of heal, but uh, yeah, now it's dead. And that's the hero, not the leader, so he won't get that back unless he gets um, text into the operation for it. Now, another thing here is, um, I think he used that Enforcer to finish off the um, Infiltrator, but that Enforcer can deal way more damage than some of the other stuff. He should have finished it off with something like the Biomancer or the um, Overseer, so that the Enforcer could maybe move up and, and super punch um, one of these Raider units um, and, and maybe get another kill off. Um, it's just, it's a lot of overkill, like a lot of overkill damage. Um, to use that. Now, uh, he again gets another uh, crit here with that Overseer onto my Harrier, so I'm going to lose that as well. But hey, that was a free unit I wasn't expecting to get anyways. So no no loss for me, really. <coughs> he might have had Manipulate Shield up again. I, again, I can't check because this is just a recording, but uh, if he did, that might have been another item misplay of he could have dropped the shield on something in there this turn. I, I'm not sure what round it is. It's round four. Yeah, he had Manipulate Shield available. Um, so those are the Entangled Huntresses. I could heal them um, to let them move. I don't remember if I do that or not. I might just move up to take pot shots. That Stager kind of hurt my ally a bit. Um, because now I don't have as much movement to be able to engage this turn, so he's going to have to take another round of pain before I can I can help him out too much. Um, I'll get some pot shots off here and uh, some blinds and stuff, so it's going to be some value. <coughs> but I won't be able to just like kill everything this round, which is what 
I had expected to be able to do. Because um, a lot of these red moves would have been um, single move blue action. So I wouldn't have killed everything, but I would have at least been able to. That's a misplay too. I should have been one tile further up. Um, I think that was just a straight misclick. If I was one tile further up, I would have had two he or the hero and the lancer as opposed to this biomancer. Who biomancer doesn't need world cry, but world cry on the bunny, on the other hand, is a huge power increase. <laughs> Nothing to do with that biomancer. I don't really need to heal anything, so I just let it sit. Um, I look at this bunny and I realize, oh wait, I've got uh, the the super attack ready to go. So let's uh, let's bounce on in. Um, I take the friendly fire in order to hit more units, and then I land a crit, <laughs> which I then can immediately heal with my other hero. So no no big loss there. Um, I could have healed those guys. I end up, I think, deciding that I might need to heal my allies' units. Um, what I should have done, this is a misplay too, because I, I didn't realize that that unit was asleep. I should have moved up and then healed the sleeping unit for him. Um, this is me. Yeah, he he said that immediately. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that was asleep. My bad. And then I s proceed to screw it up a second time um, with my uh, my operation, protective growth. Um, again, I misclick. <laughs> and I, I don't heal the sleeping one. I heal the other one instead, which, oh, well. Um, I don't know if that status clears or not, but either way, uh, it's okay. It worked out. I don't think either one of those units died, but uh, it was uh, it was a misplay in the the tail end of the fight here. <coughs> so yeah, he d Ninja does a clever little play here where he one shots his sleeping unit that won't deal too much damage, so that he can triple shot with the f the full actions of the sleeping unit. Finish it off with the heal and then get the the second pop pop um for a ton of damage on um dun damage and it can cost oh damage on a stagger on the uh sniper unit doesn't quite kill it with the operation but uh staggers it again so it can't even use a snapshot um not too much left here that that enforcer would be scary I don't remember what he tries to do with it here. Oh, right. He tries to move up to, to hit my bunny, but because of uh, both the blind and then also my sinister chorus, he, he triple fumbles. Um, which, even though it did a ton of damage, um, wasn't enough to kill it. Now, if I'd have paid more attention, I maybe shouldn't have bounced that bunny in there, because if those were wiggler attacks, that might just be a dead bunny. It'd be way closer anyways. Um... But I have enough evasion that that's the only unit I think that can really hit. The other ones would all have a ton more um, challenge to try to do that. Um, pops a cleanse. Uh, sure, why not? Um, oh, that's, I don't. Is that the healing operation? Or he must have used. I don't know what he used on that, but I guess you, there's no reason not to if he didn't use the operation. But it might have been better to use that action on something else. I I don't I didn't see exactly what he did with it. Um, at this point, I expect to just clean up, kill everything. So um, that's what I proceed to begin to do. <coughs> um, I took the the quick kill with the lancer. Now I'm trying to look and see. All right, how do I um, engage on this uh, enforcer without getting counter shot at all? Uh, again, moving around, checking checking potential accuracy range stuff here. Um, with him, I just kind of get him into position for the next go round. Sleep the enforcer because that's definitely the high risk play here. Unless I think I kill it. Yeah. Okay. So I sleep the guy in the back because I assume that enforcer is going to die. Which is a pretty good assumption. 
Um, I think, yeah, I double check. I, I had forgotten he was blinded and couldn't melee Overwatch me. Um, this guy might be staged because I, I don't know if I try to go for a shot with him or a heal. Yeah, I just finish that off. Um, have another bunny in play here that I can bounce in to do whatever I want with. Um, and he's got his AOE up as well. So I think this is another one that I take the uh, the friendly fire. And I, I even wake up the unit I slept because I'm like, yeah, and at this point everything's just going to die. So don't have to get too uh, concerned with it. Oh, die or stagger locked. I knew I had some blinds coming up that I could just fully stagger lock a bunch of these units. Um, whereas I wasn't going to always be able to get the ones in the back, so I try to finish off the one in the back and then stagger lock the rest. <sighs> yeah, one more blinding arrow, so. Um, do I take the friendly fire shot or not? No, I don't. Because I know my ally can finish off at least can finish off that biomancer if if he has to, um, and then in the meantime, uh, I've stayed locked these two units, so there's just there's no threat here anymore. Um, and then now I can use that value heal, even though I should have done it last round. Oh well. And final pot shot. Again, Ninja is a good player, so we recognize that there's only one unit that can have any actions to do anything. It takes the pot shot where you can get it. Um, and I think he even finishes off that hero as well. Although he might be trying to decide which one he wants to kill, but I mean, it really makes no difference. Yeah, he just almost kills both of them and then gets the gets a finisher. And then the last one will be left to me. Oh, no, never mind. He opts it. <laughs> Wants to take the credit. So, again, uh, that was the second fight. Um, the the kind of ending fight here. Uh, the rest of this is all just kind of us saying our goodbyes. Uh, worked out pretty well for me. Um, I didn't lose anything. But my, uh, my ally lost uh, three of his six units. So, wasn't bloodless. But, um, yeah, I, there were a, a couple misplays, I think, from Winslayer in that one. Um, could have done a little bit of a better showing, I think, with a, a better scan, and um, that enforcer could have been way scarier. But uh, he would—I don't think he could have won that fight um, at all. Um, and yeah, just some finishing up stuff here. Hit, absorb, accept a, a mission, and look if I want to take ranger training or not. I might just take nothing. I might just leave this and then save the skill points for the next level up. But, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, this is kind of finishing up with the 8-player FIFA all here. Um, I still don't plan on streaming the next one, but I will try to record that one as well and probably try to give some after-game commentary um, similar to, to how this worked out. Uh, it's been really fun, so uh, hopefully everyone in enjoyed it. Um, this little bit change of pace and uh, gets to everyone gets to see all these different perspectives of the same game. So um, as always, uh, enjoy Planetful.